413 WMAZ Morning starts now. Good baby. Friday Central Georgia. It's cold outside. We'll have some warmer weather and soggy weather coming soon. I'll have your full forecast that's coming up this morning. I'd like to see the uh, body footage or just the proof that he really did actually jump out of the car like they said he did. A sister still waiting on answers nine months after her brother was killed. We tell you about the report and what she wants to know. I think that they need to um, reevaluate their system of how these children are getting on the bus. A Macon child lost twice at a Bibb County Elementary School. What his mother says happened. And a production that involves some popular children's book is coming to Perry. Why they have some big shoes to fill coming up. Good Thursday morning, Central Georgia. You're taking a live look over a beautiful downtown Macon. The time is now 631 here on this first day of December. Happy Baby Friday. I'm Wanya Reese. And I'm Caitlin Heck, and we're off to a much better start than we were yesterday morning. Oh, yes, Taylor. It's literally night and day, no pun intended. Oh, <laughs> that was actually a good one. Yeah, it definitely is much different. I mean, we had the, the heavy rain, the gusty winds yesterday, all thanks to that cold front. Same cold fronts bringing us that cooler weather we're seeing today, but high pressure is taking over, so we have clear skies. Right now in downtown Macon, you are seeing that, and it is dry outside, but cool. 38 degrees now in Macon area wide. We're seeing those upper 30s, low 40s across the map. 35 now in Unadilla, 36 in Montezuma, 34 in Americas, and 32 now in Cochrane. Area wide, though, regardless if you're seeing those low 30s, mid 30s, upper 30s, even 40s, everybody has feels like temperatures right around freezing. So grab a jacket before you head out the door. High temperatures today will only be in those mid 50s, so a few degrees below average, but at least there'll be plenty of sunshine to go around. May a little bit warmer as you head south and east of Macon into the low 60s. Now, warmer weather, but soggy weather comes starting this weekend. I'll break down the full seven day forecast that comes up in a few minutes. Thank you, Taylor. We'll check in with you soon. This morning, a sister is waiting to see all of the evidence after officers shot and killed her brother in North Macon earlier this year. Now, a GBI report says Stephen Finfrock was traveling through Macon on I-75 in February. He pulled over into an emergency lane and a GDOT operator checked on him. He didn't respond, so they called in law enforcement. Georgia State Patrol, the Bibb Sheriff's Office, and the GBI says they approached the car and saw that he had a gun. They say Finfrock shot his gun in the car then got out and pointed the gun at officers who then fired back. I'd like to see the uh, body footage or just the proof that he really did actually jump out of the car like they said he did. Um, you know, if, if that's what he did, I don't know where he got the strength, but if he didn't, I'd like to know more about it, that nine police officers could open fire. So you just heard from his sister. That's Miss Lisa Frenfrock. As you heard, she is asking for that body cam footage and she would like to see the autopsy report as well. Uh, she also wants her brother's personal belongings from the night of the shooting. 633 on your Thursday morning, a Macon mom and grandma say they are upset after their child was lost twice at a Bibb County school. Jernisha Coger's six year old son who is autistic goes to Union Elementary School. Coger says back on November the 17th, her son Jalen never made it home from the bus and it took the school 30 minutes to find him after she called the school. The grandma Anise Koger Mosley says the little boy's teachers are not paying attention. I think that no child should be um, left alone. I think that they need to um, reevaluate their system of how these children are getting on the bus. It is important to note the six year old switched schools at the beginning of this month. We did reach out to the Bibb County School District about this. They sent us this statement right here on your screen saying in part, quote, parental concerns brought to the attention of our schools and the district are fully investigated End quote. Well, Warner Robins police and firefighters will get a bonus just in time for the holidays. Back in May, Mayor LaRonda Patrick and council talked about public safety, new hire and retention bonuses. Patrick says the agreements coupled with the first payment have already been approved and bonuses for all public safety will come at the same time. She hopes that is by mid December, right before Christmas. Early voting continues this morning and so does campaigning. Senator Raphael Warnock and Republican challenger Herschel Walker are making stops around the state to get voters out to the polls by December the 6th. Tomorrow, Warnock is slated to rally again with former President Barack Obama up in Atlanta. Herschel Walker will be in Columbus and Woodstock tomorrow before coming to Macon and Valdosta on Friday. 
Houston County is open for early voting at their four polling locations. You can vote at the main elections office in Perry, the Houston Health Pavilion, Central Georgia Tech, and the North Houston Sports Complex. And if you're 75 and up or disabled, you can actually skip to the front of the line as long as you're eligible to vote. For everyone else, though, you do have to wait in those lines, just like the one you're seeing on your screen. But Noreen Stefan says it's worth the wait, and she wants voters to know that their voices do matter. Why? Why would you feel that way? You just, you got to show up and you got to push that button and cast your vote. Early voting continues in Houston County and all across the state until tomorrow. For hours and polling locations, you should check with your local board of elections. Well, check out this story. After 60 years as a poll worker, a Macon man says this year will be his last. Willie Clark started back in 1962, three years before the Federal Voting Rights Act passed. Throughout the years, Clark has worked at all the polling places around Macon. When Clark started, he moved and cleaned equipment for different polling locations. Now he welcomes people at the door to help voting run as smooth as possible. Clark says along the way, a lot has changed. I did it back when the, uh, you just had the little curing bookies get in and pull the curing behind you and you had to write out everything. Definitely a big difference. Clark plans to work the runoff on Election Day and if you vote at Mabel White Baptist Church, you just might see him there, so make sure you tell him hello. Well, next Tuesday night, we of course are going to be following all the runoff races closely, including of course the one for U.S. Senate. Molly Jett will report from Senator Raphael Warnock's campaign, while Anthony Montalto reports from Herschel Walker's. We'll also have analysis. Ashlyn Webb will use our election tracker to show you where the votes are coming from all across Georgia. And UGA political science professor Charles Bullock will join us in studio to bring some context to the trends that we're seeing. So make sure you join us Tuesday night, December 6th, starting at 5 right here on 13, your source for election results. And don't forget, for more details leading up to the runoff, you can find our Georgia 2022 runoff election guide on 13WMAZ.com. We can also send a link to that guide right to your phone. Just text the word vote to the number on your screen, 478-752-1309. The time is now 637. Today, a second convenience center opens in East Macon on Fulton Mill Road. Mayor Lester Miller, the Solid Waste Department, and Keep Macon Beautiful will hold an official ribbon cutting ceremony at 10 a.m. In uh, off of Fulton Mill Road, I really want to say that's West Macon, but I might be wrong. It will operate today through Sunday from 8.30 a.m. to 4 p.m. You can bring yard debris, bagged household garbage, building materials, metal, furniture, and recycling for free. You can also drop off tires, but that is limited to just four items per person. And in order to drop off all of these items, you must have a valid driver's license that says that you live here in Macon Bibb County. Well, one pastor has a pastime with a point. It's a story that comes straight from the heart. Wes Pinkley has a day job at Poplar Springs North Baptist Church in Dublin, but he spends many hours in the workshop in his backyard making pins. He figures he's sanded out and put together about a thousand of them. He says it gives him joy to create something that he can easily give out as a gift. A lot of times when I'm making a pin, I'll pray for the person that I'm intending to give the pen to. And it's not the whole time, but I'll be praying for them and saying, you know, uh, this is somebody special in my life, and they, I want to do something to tell them I care. Pinkley says he got into the hobby years ago when someone from his parish gave him a lathe used for woodworking. Today, it's time for C13, our morning reporter, TJ Anthony. You're standing by, right? Okay, I don't think he hears me. <laughs> he takes you to Paradise where a theater production will be bringing a childhood favorite book back to life. And Macon's Okmoki Mounds National Historical Park just got spotlighted as one of the best places to travel in 2023. We tell you about the feature and a popular travel magazine coming up next. The time is now 639 here on your Thursday morning, December the 1st. Oh. Man, time is flying. <laughs> it is one month until we're hitting 2023. I know I'm, I'm excited and Caitlin, I know you're like pump the brakes a little bit, but <laughs> I, I'm excited for you. I'm excited for my fiance and I 50 days yes. away from the wedding oh, tomorrow. Oh my gosh. Cannot wait. Oh, it's going to be here before we know it. And uh, Christmas is going to be here before we know it. <laughs> yes. So all those procrastinators out there. This it's feeling like time. it already though. It is feeling like it today, but mm, Georgia just has this way of kind of like roping us into winter <laughs> and then pull us right back out. So that's Very what we're true. really going to see as we head into the next few days. A little taste of winter, but and then a little taste of early fall. Right now, here's a live look from a gorgeous sunrise um, at the National Fairgrounds in Perry. Wow.
gorgeous. But it's still, again, right around sunrise is when we have the lowest temperatures. That's because we've gone through so much time without the sunlight that our Earth radiates that heat out, and that's why we lose our heat. Temperatures right now in the mid 30s to upper 30s in Perry 37 area wide. We're seeing those temperatures again still falling a little bit before that sunrise 38 in Macon, 38 in Byron, 35 in Montezuma, 41 in Thomason. That's a little bit warmer than most places area wide. We're seeing some low 30s now 30 now in Cochrane and 30 in Eastman if for future view expect those temperatures to be cold in the morning. So grab the jacket or at least have long sleeves on as you head out the door. Temperatures by the noon hour will rise into the low 50s where much sunny skies coming through as we head into the 3 p.m. hour again. Maybe a few clouds rolling here and there, but mostly sunny temperatures in the upper 50s and we'll cool right back down into the upper 40s and 50s as we work into the 6 p.m. hour. Now tomorrow morning, we're going to cool right back down to those 30s, but we'll have a very average day on Friday. Temperatures right around the mid 60s with a good amount of sunshine. So a great way to end the work week. Now here's where we get a little bit of confusion or a little bit of um, I'm trying to say basically a little bit of uh, back and forth between the models. They're trying to figure out how strong will this wedge be as we head into Saturday morning. Notice the blue kind of seeping into parts of Georgia. Earlier, the models had temperatures in the 40s thanks to the cooler air as that high pressure pushes up against the Appalachian Mountains, but now right back into the 50s. So for right now, I'm going to say we're going to be somewhere in the upper 50s, low upper 40s, low 50s for Saturday morning and Saturday afternoon, a warm day temperatures in those low 70s for highs. So so if you're going to put up the lights and celebrate the Christmas spirit or the holiday spirit in general, it's a great day to do so today and into tomorrow. Saturday, things start to change because of a sprinkled chance all along a cold front that will make Saturday not a terrible day, but Sunday will be a little bit more gloomy in those mid 60s with lots of cloud cover and rain chances. That's because that cold front will stall somewhere between Macon and Jacksonville that will give us a lot of moisture in the atmosphere. So by Sunday afternoon, expect maybe some light to moderate rainfall across the area. So break out the raincoat, rain boots and jacket, especially because the rain chances will last all week, especially on Monday. Places that are going to be north of Macon have the potential to see most of that rainfall. Your 7 day forecast shows you that temperatures will rise from the 50s today to 70s on Saturday, right back to the 60s on Sunday. But rain chances stay in the forecast from the weekend and beyond. All right, thank you, Taylor. Time is 6.43. Tomorrow is Friday. You know what that means. Football Friday night. Of course, if you miss it tomorrow night, you can catch all the game highlights on our 13 WMAZ Plus app. You'll find full episodes every week. We have every game, fan of the week, quiz question, and rib rocker for you on demand on that 13 WMAZ Plus app. So download the app on your Roku or Amazon devices, and make sure you tune in tomorrow night at 11.35. We're back with more news and weather after this.